Benokri meets Samaras. Hi, I'm here with uh, Ben Okri, Booker Prize winner and uh, well-known global author. Um, I'd like to ask you just a couple of questions and about, mainly about where your inspiration comes from when you're writing stories. No, the inspiration doesn't come when you're writing the stories. You, inspiration is a very, it's a very strange um, thing in terms of creativity, really, in terms of stories. You see, sometimes you actually generate ideas yourself. Um, sometimes something strikes you in life. Um, sometimes an idea just literally pops up in your head. But you see, the thing is, you are as open to inspiration as you make yourself useful to it. Um, by that I mean quite simply that the more you write, the more inspired you're likely to become. So it's by doing it that you create the relationship with what you call inspiration. Yeah? It's, um, it really comes from a lot of activity in that chosen field. So the more you write poems, the more you see the possibility of poems in all kinds of places. Yeah? If you wait for inspiration, it very rarely comes. But when you're working, it turns out. So best be busy. How, when you're talking about metaphorical things, how deep do you go into detail, would you say? Give me an example of what you mean. Well, when you're talking, describing, you're setting up a scene. Yes. And you're describing, like, um, say we're here today, how much detail would you go into? Would you go into, like, how red the seat covers are or how, like, like right. noisy the air is? But if it's metaphorical, you say, rather than if it's a realistic scene. Well, isn't like the, the air was as heavy as lead? Okay, how metaphorical? Well, I think that, I think that depends firstly. I think the, the, the place of metaphor in stories or in poetry really does depend on the, on the theme of the work. Because there's a way in which um, there's an, over, an overriding theme that creates the resonances of all the things, images and symbols necessary to, to resonate. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I think is you, go, you have as much detail as your story is either slow or fast. If your story is slow because it's a mood story, you can have more detail. Okay. If, it's a, if, if it's a story that has to be read and told fast, the less detail the better. So you find that the more detail there, there is, the slower the, the reading is. Yeah? When you're doing writing a story, how do you make characters seem real, as in like three-dimensional? That's a difficult one. That's a really, really very, very difficult one, to be honest with you. Um, I think, first of all, you actually have to... I think that really comes from observation in life, first of all. Um, I always say to writers, um, to, to, to young writers, Writing doesn't come from writing, it comes from life. Um, so you have to take an incredible interest in, in, in people. Um, what they look like, what they th how they think, what their, what their psychology is. Um, because finally, you can only create characters to the degree that you observe characters. Okay. Yeah? Um, but when it comes to the fiction itself, the, the story itself, I'll tell you one strange thing about, about the creation or sustaining of character. When you actually have a character, the character tends to reveal themselves if you give them the situations by which they can do it. So character tends to be revealed in action. If you have, say, Joe, Joe Peters, and you say he's a, he's a big guy and bearded, um, and he's got blue eyes and a twitch on his shoulder, well, we don't really know him till he does something, okay. yeah? And you don't know him till he does something. And that's also because that's true in life. We're always in potential till we face a crisis or face a situation then. Whatever we do is what reveals us. That's where our character comes from, okay. especially in fiction. That's why they say it's an old dictum that character is action. And that's what they really mean. But there's another kind of character building that doesn't depend on action. It depends on you having really looked at someone like a piece of sculpting 
where you've got you walk all the way around them. So you want to build this character in kind of like 4D. Yeah? That's that's more static character building. A lot of Victorian novelists tend to do that. They want you to really get a rich, round feeling of a person. That one, you can build yourself. You can literally create your own character. You give them certain qualities, and after a while, you find that it starts to gel. But the gelling comes, finally, only in action. Because then they show the true colours. Then they show their true personality. Uh, what does it feel like to win the uh, Booker Prize in 1991 for The Famished Road? Well, it was, uh, it was an astonishing feeling. Um, what I said at the time still remains. It was like being, it was like being kicked into a dream. Um, and a, a dream that, that continues, really. It was, it was, it was beautiful and, and wonderful and strange. And it has, it has its dark side. And, but on, overall, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a great experience. Uh, what advice do you have for um, people who like to become writers like yourself? Um, well, first of all, take, take a great, great, great interest in life. Every aspect of it. Because you can only, you can only get out of you what you've put in. Not just in terms of observation, but also in terms of thinking. Um, read a lot. Read the best. I mean, read the best. Not the ones that people say are the best read the best, that's works that have endured, that have survived. Um, write. Okay. Write often. And give yourself the most terrifyingly difficult standards, basically. Aim, aim, aim to be the best writer you can possibly be. And if you fall short, you'll still be good. And love literature. How much has the Nigerian Civil War shaped your view of life? Because you were a lot around yes, at the time. Yeah, I was a child. I was a child of that war. Yeah, it had. It had a. Well, you grew up in the midst of so much kind of like death. Um, you know, you're you're barely seven, eight, and you see people being killed all around you. Um, I think it makes you. It certainly made me sort of. Um, have a long, deep relationship with death very early, um, and to think about death and its place in, in life, and about courage, and about what people are on the great crisis. Um, I really saw people who we thought were cowards prove to be really brave, and people who we thought were really brave turned out to be cowards. Um, I realize that you really don't know what people are like till they're, till they're in a crisis, till they're really in a stink, till there's real chaos all around. Also, you don't know what the people are like. Um, I discovered strange aspects of my people as a result of that war. I don't think I've really entirely kind of like got over or lived through the implications of that war in my life. I'm still every day trying to deal with it. Is there a book you wish you'd written? Is there a book that you've read you thought, oh, I wish I'd written that? Yeah. Sorry, written, not written. That's not a word. You want to say it again? So, <laughs> is, there, is there a book that you wish that you had written? Yeah, that's quite simple. The Odyssey by, by Homer. Okay. Ben Opry, thank you very much. Thank you. you Good luck. Great. Good luck, everybody.